Hey everybody, how you doing? Mark here, sitting out in my driveway, working on the project of trying to give you guys better audio for when I'm doing my mode of vlogging, particularly when I'm doing the 360 stuff. And I went through all that footage of the testings that I did a little while ago, and one of the ones that stood out to me as having the better audio and better comfort for me was actually having a taller windshield. If you guys remember, I went out with that cardboard on my windshield and it was about yeah, maybe that high or so. And man, the sound in my helmet was so much quieter than having this windshield on. It was like, you know, just for myself, I needed to get a bigger windscreen. So that's what we're doing today. We are going to replace this Kawasaki Vulcan windscreen. Yes, this is actually a Kawasaki uh, made product that I bought years ago, back when the bike was still in production. And we're gonna replace this with a National Cycle brand windshield. I actually have it up on Jen's car over here basically baking in the sun. So as soon as I touch something, I'll burn myself. Okay, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta make sure that it's the most dangerous thing you could ever do. <laughs> but um, when I was researching for the National Cycle windshield, I was basically given only one windshield to really use, and that was model N2210. And they said that was a fit for my bike. Okay, but of course you need to buy the mounting bracket. So I was looking up a mounting bracket for my bike. And the only one I could really find was kit number, actually kit letters, um, BR. Okay, so that's what I got. So brought it home and went to go put it on the bike. And yes, this is a complete transparency. I've already had the windshield up on the bike. And lo and behold, my windshield didn't fit. I was like, well, what the hell? You know, the thing said this, the other thing said that, it should all work. I actually called National Cycle and talked to one of their um, support guys and he was looking it up on his computer and he's like, well, yes, those do actually go on your bike, but those pieces are not compatible with each other. <laughs> he goes, if you have the N2210 windshield, you have to have the kit BS, and I have BR. He goes, however, if you want to use the mounting kit, you can get the N2220, and that would be compatible with your mounting kit. So yeah, there was two windshields that would fit, two mounting kits that would fit, but they don't fit each other. <laughs> But after I did a little bit of research, I found that the BS mounting kit just included a really long spacer in the kit to make up for the distance. So I basically went down to the hardware store and I bought three quarter inch spacers, but I bought two of them for each bolt. And then of course I had to get a longer bolt because the ones that came with the uh, mounting bracket weren't going to work either because they were only like, uh, I think 25 centimeters long or not centimeters, millimeters long. And those didn't work. So I had to get something bigger and I got something that's like uh, three inches. They're a little long, but Hey, they work. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you taking this off, mounting up the new one. Let's get into it because I know that these parts are hot and I'm just really raring to touch them right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take off the four bolts here. I got one up here, one down here, and the same on the other side as well. All right, there's one. There's two. All right, this one's a little tricky because I gotta hold the windshield as I'm undoing this last bolt. That way the windshield doesn't fall to the ground. All right, there we go. Four bolts, windshield is off. All right, now that I got the windshield off of Angel there, so as you can see, all gone. Um, let me show you exactly what comes with the windscreen and what comes with the mounting kit. The windscreen, that's it. That's basically what you get. So you get the windscreen, and all the brackets and stuff, you get 
the uh, brackets underneath here as well. And then for the mounting kit, you get two 16 uh, millimeter long Allen bolts, two short washers, two 20 inch or 20 centimeter or millimeter, sorry, uh, Allen bolts with slightly larger washers. You get these two um, pinch brackets, I guess is what we'll call them right now. And then you actually get four of these. I misplaced one. I don't know where it went to, but again, these are a 25 uh, millimeter Allen bolt. And what I mean by an Allen bolt is because it's actually got the, um, the Allen bolt uh, hex in the middle. So it takes an Allen wrench. But like I said, the systems do not go compatible with each other on a 1600. Sorry, <laughs> I haven't used this camera in so long. It's hard for me to judge where I need to be putting things. <clears throat> so this is what I found out I needed to do to convert this uh, kit BR into a mounting kit BS. All right, we basically will not be using the 25 millimeter Allen bolts at all. I went out and bought new, uh, mounting bolts. I think mine that I bought are three inches long. You don't really need to have them three inches. You might be able to get away with about a two and a half. And then I bought eight of these three quarter inch spacers and I'll use two of them per mounting uh, area. Okay. So let me show you exactly how we're going to do it. Now, if you order the mounting kit BS, you will basically get one spacer per larger bolt, okay? And I think they're like a 50 millimeter long bolt, something like that. All right, guys, so here's our bracket that we're gonna put on this side. And the uh, windshield mounting tabs are going up. You got this long piece here at the bottom, and that's going towards the bottom of our mounting area. We're gonna put the large bolt through we are going to put the large spacer onto the bolt. So it's between the, uh, the fairing and the, and the mount. Now at the bottom, I got the shorter bolt that goes on. I've got the thinner spacer and it's almost like a big fat washer. Then that goes on. And then again, I'll just do it finger tight. I'm gonna grab my five millimeter Allen key and screw it in the rest of the way. Now I'll do the same thing up at the top, just finish screwing it in all the way. All right guys, same thing for the other side. You stick the bolt through the top hole, put the large spacer on, and then we'll just get that going, get it started. Reach in my pocket, get my other one, put the bolt through, then put the spacer on the back side and get that going in the hole. And then we just tighten them up. All right, now we're gonna put the windshield on. As you can tell, <laughs> that's why you need the spacers. There's a lot of difference, a lot of space to make up. I'm going to grab a bolt. It's going to come up through the side there. This black piece is going to go on top and down over the bolt. And then I put my two spacers on just like that. And now I'll put it in and start tightening up, get that bolt going into the uh, pre-welded nut right there. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for now because I gotta do the other one now. Of course, this one's gonna be a little bit trickier, but it will go through the windshield and the bottom hole of that black bracket 
just like that. I will put one spacer, second spacer, and then we'll just put it into the into that pre-welded bolt or that pre-welded nut I should say. Again I don't want to put them too tight I just want to get them to where they're in place and holding. All right same thing goes for this other side. Put my bolt through put the black piece on there. Take two of my spacers. One and two. Get it lined up into that hole for that that nut. Get that finger tight. All right so again gotta get that lined up. Bolt goes in. There's one spacer. I'm gonna hold on to the spacer pinch between my fingers like this. All right, got it all lined up and I'm just screwing it in by hand. Okay, lastly, I just gotta tighten up the four bolts, the two on each side. All right, tighten that up, tighten that up, all right. All right, guys, oh, there we go. Look at that, rock solid. It's not going anywhere. That is a National Cycle windshield installation right there. Little modifications that I did just to uh, make my uh, BR mounting bracket into a, essentially a BS mounting bracket, but it works. It really does. Had to buy a couple of spacers and a few longer bolts short of that all good. I say I go grab my 360 camera, go for a little bit of a ride, check how the audio changed from before I had this windshield to now having this windshield. Let's go for a ride. Okay guys, so here's a little sound test for you. Just going through a 25 mile an hour area. And I am getting a little wind, not much, but a little. So the real test, I think, is going to be when we get out to the country. Get up to 55, 60, see what the uh, audio is like then, right? Okay, well, this is 45 miles an hour with my windshield open, you know, my visor. So... I'm kind of curious on what the sound's going to be like doing this at 45 because this is normally where my sound audio would start turning to crap. But I'll just drop my visor real quick. I'm just kind of curious on how that changed the sound. I, I know that my voice will become like bassier and stuff like that. There might be a little vibrato because of the uh, uh, face shield being down but I, I'm wondering how that's going to work alright so here I am I'm doing 55 miles an hour now I am talking a little louder but it's not because I feel I have to I don't have so much uh, wind rushing around my helmet to where I feel I have to talk louder but I think talking just slightly louder than normal is better than you know talking like this and talking how I normally do and just kind of almost mumbling in a way. So there was another part to the windshield that I had actually removed and I forgot to tell you guys about it. And it's for the front um, down by the headlight. There was like a smaller, thinner plexiglass type material that filled in the hole. But I took it on a ride, and then I took that off and went for another ride. I felt that the, um, the part just completely removed was so much better because it allows air to come up this direction. 
know, I, I don't feel like I'd be uh, overheated or anything like that because all the airflow is being blocked from hitting me on these hot days. I mean, it's coming up on 85 degrees today and I'm actually feeling comfortable. I got a little wind coming up from underneath the, the windshield, hitting me in the chest, pulling my body down. It feels nice, it really does. I gotta tell you guys, my helmet is so much quieter that I can actually hear things. I can hear like the slap of my cam chain. You know, that's the Vulcan motorcycle is a very loud motorcycle because of that cam chain. And I can now hear it. I can hear that little buzz of the cam chain. I can hear more pops from my uh, muffler system. So that's kind of interesting. I usually don't hear stuff like that. Uh, when I was going through, uh, just through the city, in the smaller, slower, 25, 35 mile an hour areas, I could actually hear my front tire on the pavement, just kind of zzzz on the front pavement. You know, again, that's a sound I don't really hear because of that wind noise around my helmet. But now, this is wonderful. Alright, so I think that's a good enough wind test for this portion of it. I think I'll keep the video going until I get the second uh, installment of this uh, audio uh, fix, I guess is what I'll call it. When I get that technical track E system, we'll see how the audio does with that. Okay, everybody, the day has come. I finally got my Tentacle Track E package in the mail. So I want to just show you exactly what comes with this. And I'll just give you a heads up. I've already been playing with it a little bit. So this is not an actual open box reveal, first thought impressions. Okay, I've been playing with it for pretty much the whole day. So here's the little unit, the Tentacle Track. There is a uh, door there for USB. This one is your microphone plug. This one here is for headphone jacks. That there is a USB-C charging port. And then here is the only switch you need that turns it on, turns it off, starts and stops recording. So yeah, very simple device. You just pull it down until the uh, lights go on. That means it's turning on. Now it's on. The white means that it is uh, in standby mode. Then you take that button and you push it up towards your little colored ring here. You see that it turned red. That means that it's re recording. You push it up again and that means it's gone white. So that means it's stopped recording. And then you pull it back down starts flashing for a little bit, turns off, and now the power is off to the unit. Very simple uh, unit there. Comes with a USB-C cord. And in this little packet here is the little metal wire clip that you can put on. I have no need to use the clip, so I'm not worrying about it. But, Putting it on the helmet was really nice and simple. Let me show you what I did. That's it right there. Yep, the return of the dual lock. <laughs> I put a pad of it on the back as well. All I gotta do is just put it on there. Just stick it on, just like that. All done. <laughs> no clay, no sculpting anything, no bending metal, just on and off. Simple. All right, let's go for a ride. Let's test this unit out. I'm super excited about this unit. I think it will make a tremendous difference in my audio. So let's go for a ride. All right, guys, so here we go. We're going to start doing some testing for this Tentacle Track E system. It's 
So this is typical 25 mile an hour right here. And I'm sure that the audio is going to be fine. Uh, the wind is blowing a little bit today, so that will be a little bit different from when I was just doing the windshield test uh, a few days ago. I might have to drop my visor down, my, uh, my sun visor, just because even though it's cloudy and overcast today, it's almost like it... Uh, it's almost like making it feel brighter. There's like light everywhere. <laughs> Close that and see if there's any sound difference with the uh, face shield down. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, so this is the 45 mile an hour stuff. And before I was getting pretty decent audio with just the windshield, not having the, the tentacle on there. And just up through here is coming up to 55. Alright, so I'm doing 55 miles an hour. And yeah, this might actually be working. Oh, it kind of it told me it peaked out right there. And right there. And right there, and right there. Holy crap, really? I thought this 32-bit float system wasn't supposed to peak out. Now, I don't know if that's telling the system that it's peaking out and that it has to adjust for something. It's still flashing that it's peaking out. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know if it's me talking that's doing it or what. Alright, now I wasn't talking there and it peeked out, so it's grabbing just wind noise from around the helmet. And it's kind of telling me that it's peaked out. Wow, that one's flashing a long time. Seems like it's telling me that it's peaked out more than it's actually uh, not peaked out. So I don't know what that means, guys. I won't know until I get home, load up the footage, see what it's got. I've got the gain turned down as far as it will go. I cannot actually turn it off. It's at plus six no matter what. I kind of wish there was a way I could just turn it off, but I can't. I also have the lows cut out, so I don't know if that, if I turn it on, is that going to make any difference? So, I'll probably get more low-end noises now, and it seems like the, uh, <laughs> it seems like the meter stays red longer. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe it's better to have that, have that turned on then. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, well I'm not going to do this for too much longer. I don't think there's too many other controls that I can uh, turn off and on. But uh, I'll go over to a nearby park and kind of look at the app and see if there's anything else that I can adjust. I don't think there is. All right guys, so that concludes my test. And I tell you, I think I got it pretty well. I mean, there's still wind noise and stuff like that. And you're gonna get this, especially when you have a three quarter face helmet like I've got. But yeah, I'm very happy with the audio that I'm now getting. Uh, it's not uh, blaringly obvious uh, wind noise there, but I mean, you can hear it. And I can actually see my voice waves in the peaks and stuff of the uh, of the graphs and stuff so yeah it, it's helped out a lot so I'm very happy with that that's just it guys I'm happy with it I don't know what else I can say about it I haven't played with it enough to really uh, get an in-depth uh, opinion on it I just know right now it works 
All right, well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Always believe, guys, that you can go out and have your adventure and enjoy life. Bye, guys.